Okay, so a lot of interesting uh, questions came uh, this uh, this year. You know, this COVID uh, really, really challenges uh, us to think um, and to look at things from from a different way. And there's a lot of halakhic questions that came and whatever. But I was thinking about something um, slightly different, um, something that has to do with the uh, culture of, of debate and, and the culture that perhaps it's going to serve some sort of an inspiration about how do we even debate questions and, and uh, in general. I mean, like in this time, like, you know, about COVID, like, you know, everybody thinks that they have the answers. This one says yes, and this one says um, I want to have that in mind as we delve to a what seems to be like a very simple question um, that became very, very relevant uh, this year during COVID. Um, and what I'm talking about is a question that um, has to do with our Nusach As you know that our Sidur um, is not the only Sidur. Okay, so Beth Cheko, for example, is an Ashkenazi show, right? And the sitter that we use is Nusach Ashkenaz. But within Nusach Ashkenaz, there are variations. For example, there's the um, Hasidic Nusach, what we call Nusach Sfarad. Okay, um, in the old days, actually, even within the Ashkenazi community, there were several Nusachot. There was Nusach Ashkenaz, which was mainly uh, Germany, Northern France, Etc. There was the um, Romanian Nusach, there was the French Nusach, there was, you know, Ita Italy still has like their own the Italian Nusach, and of course there was the Edot Mizrach, the Sephardic Nusach, and there was the, the Hasidim, there was Nusach Sfarad based on kind of a combination of Nusachot, and they called it Sfarad because Sfarad is Spain where the Jews came to Eastern Europe after the times of the Inquisition in, in, in the late uh, 1400s, the early 1500s, they moved from Spain towards uh, Eastern Europe. So there was a lot of different Nusachot. Same goes, by the way, for the Sephardic Nusach. Today we, we say like, you know, Sephardim, but there's Moroccan, there's Iraqi, and there is um, um, Persian, and there is uh, Yemenite, and there's like a lot of different variations of Nusachot. What happened was with time, mainly because of people tra traveling between communities and because of print and that kind of stuff that somehow we ended up with pretty much one Nusach. Sometimes you see like, you know, little variations there, or if you're gonna go to a, 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 a Hasidic shul, um, used to be like one in the old, um, Rambam's uh, building on Pico. I think they moved to a different building on Pico. Uh, so that's Nusach Sfarad, which is the Hasidic Nusach and whatever. But generally speaking, they're very, very close. When you say the Ashkenazi Nusach, Sfarad Nusach, why am I talking about that? Because when COVID hit, people found themselves mainly in Israel, but also here in America, davening together before the shuls were open. And even now that even some you know, the shuls are, are open, davening together based on geography. Neighbors getting together, davening together. Well, one guy is Sephardic, one is Ashkenazi, one is a Hasid, one does. Da, 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 da. All of a sudden, you don't daven in the shul with the customs and the nusach that you're used to. So the question is, what do you do? What do you do? Everybody has a nusach. Everybody is, you know, want to maintain their nusach, right? If if uh, you're going to walk into a Sephardic shul, I'm not too sure that you're going to find, you're not going to find it easy. You're not going to find exact, forget about the music. I'm not talking about that. But even like, you know, to find, even the text is like, you know, for example, it's, it's, uh, it's different. We start, how do we start to do Sha'on Musaf on Shabbat? We said, Na'aritzcha ve na'kdishcha kesod tziach salfei kodesh. The Sephardim start with, Keter yitnu lecha Hashem elokeinu malachim amonei mala. It's a totally different text. You're going to go to Psukei de Zimra. We start with Baruch Shamar. They start with Hodu. 
you're going to go to um, the end of Musaf. We say Pituma Ketoret. We say it at the end before Aleinu. They say Aleinu at the very end. There's a lot of variations on, on the theme. They start with Pituma Ketoret. There's a lot of changes. So what happens um, if I end up, because my shul is closed, what I end up davening with my neighbors, and what should we do? Because we need to daven together. It's not doable that everybody's going to be in their own nusach. We're not davening as a community. It raises real halachic questions, right? Because there's certain sections that are out of order. What do you say in terms of the kedusha? What do you say? In so, you know, so, it, so it's interesting because apparently this is not a new question. That question already was brought before. And um, what I would like to do is, first of all, I'm going to share my screen here. Hold on. Uh, here, I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go here. This way. OK. I'm going to share my screen, and you will see that what we're going to try today to do is to look at five different tshuvot, right? Five different answers that were written as piskei halacha by different rabbis, suggesting five different models or five different solutions for that question. What do you do when you have a bunch of people davening together and you need to create some sort of a hybrid minion or not let's see what um what they uh thought so the first attempt was what we call the nusach achid nusach achid is the nusach that um was instituted by Rav Goren, chief rabbi, first chief rabbi of IDF. Here, um, it started in the IDF in 1963. Rav Goren established a Nusach Achid, meaning a unified Nusach. He, he put together a Sidur. I couldn't find a picture of that Sidur, but I did find the Haggadah. As, as you can say, you can see Haggadah Shul Pesach, Lechayalei Tzva Adana L'Israel. This is Haggadah for the Chayalim. Nusach Achid, unified Nusach for the Chayalim, um, and he put it together. So in 1963, his first attempt created a Sidur that is going to be for all the Chayalim in IDF. Um, and what he did is basically he took the Nusach Sfarad, Nusach Sfarad, i.e. the Ashkenazi Nusach used by, with some elements of the, you know, the, what the Hasidim are using. So, for example, we say Nekadesh Shimcha Ba'olam. They say Naaritz. They say Naaritzach VeNakdisha. But little variations on the theme. But still, we're talking about the Ashkenazi Nusach, the way it was mainly in Eastern Europe. Not exact, not exact um, um, definition, but close enough. So he didn't create a new Nusach, he took something that existed already. And he said, this is going to be the Nusach for everybody. And since just like everybody is coming to the army and everybody is like Spartan and Ashkenazim and Yemenites and whatever, and everybody are together in the same units and everybody's davening together, everybody's fighting together, everybody's eating from the same kashrut, everybody is using the, the chief rabbinate. And that's it. We don't need any of that nonsense of like Ashkenazi, Sephardi, whatever. This is the Nusach, and that's it. And he chose, of course, a Ashkenazi Nusach. Um, from the very beginning, um, there were a lot of objections for that. Um, even though the main Sidur, Sidur in At Israel, some of you are familiar with that. Sidur in At Israel is the Sidur, for example, that I grew up with. Um, anyone in Israel, like, you know, here in America, you have Hagigat Sidur and you get, I don't know, nowadays it's Koren, I know, but like in 
used to be like, you know, the main sidur here in America, probably the art scroll, whatever. But in the old days, or at least in Israel, it was always Rinat Israel. And generations of Israel grew up with Rinat Israel until it was not uh, worthwhile for the publications to print it. Um, and they stopped printing it. By the way, there was a new print uh, of Rinat Israel in 2019. Which is very interesting. Uh, they make a couple of changes, that kind of stuff. But basically, Sidur Rinat Israel in Nusach Sfarad was the main Sidur, and many, 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 especially modern Orthodox, uh, what we call Tzionidati, uh, shuls in Israel still use that. And that's the, uh, the Nusach. Many object to that um, because. It's not really a compromise. It's not really fair. It's an Ashkenazi Nusach. So it's not really, yeah, it has a little bit of elements from the Sephardic Nusach, but it's not really a combination. And therefore, the Sephardim had issues with that. The Rav Ovadia is going to see his Tshuva soon. Objected at the uh, very um, beginning. And it's interesting that today, even though for many years that was the standard today, um, there is no standard Nusach, even in Tzahal, even in IDF, there is no standard Nusach, and every um, soldier bring their own Sidur, and they daven from their own Sidur, and whatever. Okay. And of course, Sarav Goren, um, just to put it in perspective, the chief first chief rabbi of IDF, later on becomes the chief rabbi of um, Israel. Um, tremendous uh, personality. You can uh, Google Wikipedia, whatever um, on him. Wrote a lot of books, wrote a lot of psikim. Um, was extremely Zionist, of course. Um, very, very strong opinions about a lot of things. Um, and, and, and it's definitely that approach is, is representative of that um, mindset at that time in Israel. You know, a melting pot. We need one culture. That means one Nusach, one way things are going to be. And because at that time, at least, there was the elite, was the Ashkenazi um, elite. It was also evident in that, uh, in that Nusach. So that was the first attempt, but he didn't write a Chuvai about that. He just made it. Um, he was a person of tachlis. He was like, uh, you know, he just like when he believed in something, he just went ahead and did that. I don't know if you guys remember a couple of years ago, we had his grandson was here for a couple of years. Um, uh, Zvika and Hila, they were here for a couple of years. He was doing a, uh, he was doing a post uh, doc at UCLA. And so Zvika was the grandson is the grandson of, uh, of Goren, who's uh, Armenian every day. Um, anyway, but I want to go into the chuvot that we found about uh, that question. The first one that I want to talk about is Arav Ovadia Yosef. Um, Arav Ovadia Yosef, um, was born in 1920, passed away in 2013. Um, probably the most important Sephardic uh, rabbi, most important Kosek in the 20th century, um, was also a political uh, leader of Tnuat Chas, uh, one of the parties in the Israeli Knesset. Um, he was the chief rabbi of Israel. Um, Tremendous uh, Torah personality. He wrote dozens of uh, books. Uh, uh, the Shuti Chavedat is is just a masterpiece, uh, genius beyond beyond uh, description. Um, he was a rabbi in in Egypt for a short time, but mainly he was uh, he was in Israel and, and really influenced the entire uh, Sephardic community. He had big ideas. Um, his idea was basically all the differences in the Sephardic communities between the 
Iraqis and the Moroccans and the whatever, everybody should be unified as one based on the Psakim, based on the rulings of the Shulchan Aruch. And that actually, because of his personality, because of his um, acceptance as the Posek, as the authority, halachic authority among the Sephardic um, jury all over the world, everybody adhered to his Psakim. After his death, things started to move, especially with the Moroccan community, um, that they have a different tradition, whatever, that's perhaps can be like a whole different shiur by itself. But Arab Abadi Yosef was also a very, very um, proud Spartic. Um, there's like tremendous amount of material about him online. I don't want to go into that because that's not really um, our topic. I want to go into um, what he wrote about our question. Wasn't so he, he kind was, of doing what the Rav Gorin was doing, except just with it among the Sephardim? Yes and no. Yes, but no. <laughs> Let me explain. Okay? So in his shoot, shoot that means Shayotu Chuvot, questions and answers, a huge uh, volume that he wrote, Yechavedat, he writes the following. I, I, I'm going to read and translate here on the screen. <laughs> he quotes the Chida that... Um, uh, lived in the 1500s. The Chada wrote the following. He quotes the Ari living in, I'm sorry, the, the, the Chida in the 1700s. That he quotes the Ari, right, of Sfat. That the Ari writes in, that means when it comes to Tfila and the Nusach, the versions of the Tfila, one may not change the original custom, the original version. Just, yes, there are 12 gates, so to say, in the heaven representing the 12 tribes. And everybody has a passage, a way to reach the heaven. And here it becomes interesting. Aval. However, the Sephardic Nusach is easy pass. They can go, the, the Sephardic Nusach can go through the Ashkenazi gate, can go through the Sephardic gate, the Yemenite gate, whatever. It's superior to all the other Nuschaot. Whatever. He said, therefore, we understand that the Ari, according to the Ari, now you have to understand, the Ari was an Ashkenazi guy. This is why this has become so interesting. Was an Ashkenazi guy, but he investigated, and he himself realized, based on his investigation, that the Sephardic Nusach is better, is more accurate, it's superior, and therefore, the Ari himself, this Ashkenazi genius rabbi, great rabbi, decided to switch to the Sephardic Nusach. However, the Sephardim are not allowed to start davening in Ashkenazi Nusach. And he, go, he brings more and more uh, proofs for that in the Shut Yosef Omer, da, 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 all those, the Khatam Sofer, he says, the Maharam Shik. He brings specifically Ashkenazi Poskim that support, according to his understanding at least, support his opinion. Okay? The Admor of Tzanz and the Levushe Mordechai, and whatever. And he says the following. The, one of the previous rabbis, the authorities, was Nish'al odot kehal miyotzei sparat shayu noagim nitpalo bet haknesat amerkazi shel ha'ir. Okay, there was a question about a group of Sephardim that used to daven in the main shul of that town, that city. So na'agul itpalel shem benusach ashkenaz. However, that shul was an ashkenazi shul. 
ואחר כך נפרדו הספרדים והלכו להתפלל בבית המדרש בנוסח הספרדים וכמנהג אבותיהם. And later on the group of Sephardim left that shul and went to the Sephardic, the Sephardic uh, shul. והרב מרא דעתרא לא היה לו נוח בזה. However, the chief rabbi was not happy about that. מישהו מרוב המדרת מלך, because we have a concept that when you daven, you need to do it with the most, you know, the largest community, meaning we are, we don't uh, promote this idea of breaking up minyanim. Right? Sometimes, I mean, there, there, are no, there are no other options, but the ideal is that people daven together. So the fact that that group of Sephardim left the shul and went and started their own little Sephardic shul, the rabbi was not happy about that. The Heshiv, however, the answer that that rabbi, that rabbi received, and the tshuva that the rabbi received was, since the Sephardim are not allowed to change their nusach, and they're obligated to maintain their Sephardic nusach, they must allow them to have their own minion, a Sephardic minion. ואין בזה משום ברוב ארם ארדות מלך, שעד הרבה הם מתפללים בנוסחות שונות בבית כנסת אחת, יש בזה משום לא תתגודדו. Right? It's a, it's, a, it's a prohibition from the Torah to have groups of groups of groups. I'm doing, that group is doing A, and that group is doing B, and that group is doing C. Okay, moving on. Ubishut ma'aram shit, blah, blah, blah. Tamach yisodot tshuvato al divrei amar shdam. I said the Ashkenazi poskim also agree with that. Ma'aram shit was a, a posek, as far as I remember, in Hungary. Um, And the main nusach is the nusach, is the Sephardic nusach. The Ketav Shalachen, even if you have a lot of people in the nusach Ashkenaz, Rashi Lashon Minago, to be in the nusach Sephardic, which is the nusach Meshubach and Atzach. And therefore, even an Ashkenazi is allowed to change his nusach and to take upon himself or herself the Sephardic nusach because it is superior. Okay, so just like, so Adina is, is right on, on that sense, just like Rav Goren, without explaining his actions, just like Rav Goren just did it, deciding that it's going to be one Nusach, and he chose the Ashkenazi Nusach, Rav Obadi Yosef says, no, yes, we need one Nusach, but the Nusach, the correct Nusach is the Sephardic one. Okay, the correct but, Sephardi, Sephardi, but, but there were, but there's a lots of different Sephardi ones. You said, yes, but these are like you know, tiny changes, tiny tiny changes. It's not changes like between the Sephardi and the Ashkenazi. Okay, so therefore, according to Rabbi Badia Yosef, if you have now a minion in in the yard or in the street, right, bunch of neighbors together. According to Arab Ovadia Yosef, everybody should daven the Sephardic Nusach. Because Sephardic Nusach is more accurate, it's superior, and therefore it's okay for the Ashkenazim to switch to the Sephardic Nusach. The Sephardim may not switch to the Ashkenazim Nusach. And since everybody is obligated to daven in the same Nusach, that's the solution. Everybody needs to um, switch to the Sephardic Nusach. This is the opinion of Arab Obadia Yosef. Okay? Next. Uh, as soon as my computer knows me. Okay. 
The next one is from the shoot of Mishneh Alachot. Harav Klein, knows, known also the Ungvart Rebbe or the Admor of Ungvart. Um, Harav Menashe Klein um, was born in 1923 and passed away in 2011. He lived most of his life in the U.S. The Rav, the Rav, the Rabbi of Kilat Ungvart in Brooklyn. Later on, in his later years, he made Aliyah and he lived uh, in Israel. And he wrote this uh, uh, shoot, a, a series of shoot called Mishne Halachot. Um, very interesting uh, guy, he made Aliyah eventually um, in 2009, and he lived uh, there in Israel until his uh, era in 2011. Um, and he was asked pretty much the same question. And he has a totally, totally different outlook on the question and a different answer. And he says the following. So the question that was brought to me is when you have a bunch of people getting together, like a summer camp or something or whatever, and you have Sephardim and Ashkenazim, you have people with different customs, what should we do? Okay. And what seems to me, Hagam, that perhaps there's an issue of lot it's going to do, meaning if everybody's going to do their own thing, this party guy is going to dive in his own way, and the Ashkenazi next to him is going to dive in a different way, that's not it's going to do, that's not davening together. And then he says something very interesting. However, I saw in Yerushalayim, it's a very famous shul in Yerushalayim, שבאים שם אנשים להתפלל מכל מיני מנהגים. In Zichron Moshe in Yerushalayim, you have people that come from all, with different customs, different נוסחאות, ספרדים, אשכנזים, whatever, it's a big mishmash. וכל מי שעובר לפני התיבה מתפלל נוסחו. And anyone who is the chazan is daven his own נוסח. And here's the important part. ולא ראיתי מוחין בזה. Nobody got upset. Nobody corrected. בירושלים, uh. this is not Beverly Hills. בירושלים, עיר של חכמים וסופרים הוא. This is Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a place of many wise people, a lot of rabbis. People know what's right, what's wrong. This is not LA. <laughs> right? ומסתמה הנהיגו המנהג מגאוני קדמי, ויש לסמוך עליו. That means, if this is happening in Yerushalayim, he says, I don't know what's the source for that, but the fact that it is established, and Zichon, uh, and Zichon Moshe in Yerushalayim is a very old show, is at least 150 years old. The fact that th that shul operates that way in that particular place in Yerushalayim where you have actually people that know what they're doing means it is established. One can rely on that practice. Im can. Therefore, also in our case, Kevan, the lake and Nusach Uminag Lichora, Afshar Lassot can. Therefore, he said, in our case, meaning in a, whether it's a summer camp or whatever, or people in COVID getting together to daven, you can do the same thing. Meaning what? Everybody is going to follow the chazan. Everybody's going to follow the chazan. If this Sephardi guy is the chazan, everybody's going to daven his nusach. If this Ashkenazi guy is the chazan, everybody's going to follow his nusach. By the way, I have to say that when I davened in Yerushalayim, 
uh, when I was saying Kaddish on my mom, um, I went to the every day to the uh, um, Shtiblach in Katamon. And um, the practice in Shtiblach in Katamon is that everybody follow the Chazan. Yemenite, Ashkenazi, Sephardi, whatever. That's the, there, there is no Nusach of the place for the Shul. Whoever leads the davening, everybody followed. Ve'im, and continues, ve'im yeshorov minusach echad, ulai azlinan bataruba. But he says, perhaps another way is, if there's a vast majority of one nusach, let's assume this is a vast majority of Ashkenazim, and like, you know, a minority of Sephardim, so everybody should follow the Ashkenazim because they are the majority. And vice versa. Al kol panim, nonetheless, ha'ikar shelo ya'asu machloket baze ki ze'ikar. The main thing, it should not be a debate. That's the most important thing. He said, yeah, Sephardim, Ashkenazim, that nusach, that nusach. He said, what's the difference? Yeah, everybody should have it together. I agree with Arab Goren on that element, meaning there should be one unified nusach for that tefillah, Rav Goren thought it was Ashkenazi Nusach. Rav Ovadia Yosef thought it was Sephardic Nusach. Rav Klein says it really doesn't matter as long as everybody are davening together the same Nusach. Whether it's following the Chazan or whether it's the majority, it really doesn't matter whatever they decide as long as everybody's davening together the same Nusach. Okay, so so far we have three approaches. Okay, we're going to have three more. One, Ashkenazi, two, Sephardi, three, the majority or the Chazan. It doesn't matter. But as long, but all three agree that it's got to be one Nusach for everybody. It's unacceptable that everybody is going to have, this one is going to say one thing and the other one is going to say this thing. and this, this, this. Everybody got to dive in together. Something. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. So Rob Klein said, whoever happens to be davening that day, you follow. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Moving on. Now I come to uh, Arab, Moshe, Arab Moshe Feinstein. And Arab Moshe Feinstein, of course, um, just to put it in perspective, was born in 1895 um, and he passed away in 1986. The greatest posek, the the definitely Gdolador, the, the the greatest posek um, after the Holocaust, um, lived here in in America, um, and uh, just tr tremendous Tamid Chacham. Like you know, it's 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 impossible even to comprehend um, his work and the way he he approached Halakha. I'm just like in the middle of reading a book about him, and his analysis of Halakha is just mind-boggling. It's just unbelievable. It's, I, I can't, I, you know, you should read about him. It's just like tremendous personality. It's just uh, beyond words, beyond words. I, 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 I obviously I was, um, I never met him. And, and uh, when uh, I'm just like starting to, in recent years, I'm starting to get acquainted with his Writing is just unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Anyway, so Arab Moshe Feinstein in Igrot Moshe, his most famous work, writes in his shoot the following. If, is this a problem? Is there a problem to daven in a minion where each person daven in a different nusach? Especially if you have a choice and you have two options, where you're going to daven. Option one, you have many little shows, like, you know, what we call Cineplex, you know, where we have the, the Jacob, you have, you have the Hashkama, you have Benny's, you have the main shul, you have YP, you have a bunch of Minyanim in the same building. But unlike our shul, Asher Sham Lo Kavua Nusach Tfila, but there's no specific Nusach. Elamisha Over Lifnea Teva, 
מתפלל כהנוסח שהוא רגיל, but rather, whoever is davening, whoever is leading the תפילה, is davening whatever his נוסח, וכל המתפללים נוהגים כרצונם, כל אחד כהרגלו. וואו. Wow. What's the story here? There's, there is no, there is no one נוסח for the show. Okay? But, if there's a Ashkenazi guy leading the davening, it means nothing. Meaning that the Persian guy on the left is davening in his nusach, and the chassid on the right davening in his nusach, and everybody, and the Yemenite guy in the back davening his nusach. Everybody does their own thing. There's a chazan, he is doing his nusach, and everybody's doing their own, their own thing. That's option one. Option two. ושני, option two, בית הכנסת קבוע, אשר מתפללים שם בנוסח חסידי פולין ואונגרן, אבל כולם שווים. The other option is a regular shul. Okay, for that, in that particular example, he talks about Ashkenazi, uh, נוסח, probably נוסח, ספר, uh, נוסח אשכנז, פולין and אונגרן, that means Poland and Hungary. אבל כולם שווים, that means everybody davening the same נוסח. Okay, everybody has the same סידר, everybody is davening the same, the same נוסח. There are no variations. Just like what we have, that Jacob. Here's what he says. הנה פשוט, לעניות דעתי. For me, here's the, not me, רב פיינשטיין says, for me, here's the answer. שחילוקים הקטנים שאיכה בין הנוסחאות לא נחשבים לדין הכלום. Amazing. He said, like, the little differences between the nuschaot, it's nothing. It means nothing. It has zero halachic implication. And everybody can daven together as one community. It's not groups. It's not little to do. And that's it. And it's a well-known thing. So our function here, completely disagrees with all the opinions that we have seen so far. Everybody so far assumes that it's a problem if everybody is not davening the same Nusach. Uh, Feinstein says, no. It's totally okay. Totally okay. Sephardi guy is going to have his Nusach and Ashkenazi guy is going to have his Nusach and everybody's davening together their own Nusach and it makes nothing. It's, 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 so what if they're saying different words? The differences are not so acute that it's actually going to make any difference. Okay? Not only that, Uvifrat, especially, Shekol davar harei kol echad eino mashmiya kolo kol kach. He said specifically, everybody's diving into their own. They're mumbling. Everybody's mumbling. It's not nobody screams. Nobody really knows how you daven if you're, if you're Hasidic or Ashkenaz or Sephardic or Yemenite. Who cares? And then he comes to the, he adds to the Utfilat 18 and the Amida, the 18. It's silent anyway, where we have the, the main differences. So nobody hears it. בלשון הקדושה שזה אומר נקדש וזה נקדישה. He said, okay, what about קדושה? קדושה, you know, we start, נוסח אשכנז, we start in נקדש את שמך בעולם, right? In נוסח ספרד, they say נקדישך ונעריצך. He said, okay, what about that? כיוון שבעצם אין צורך לקהל לומר זה כלל. And this is something that I always answer. This is not something that a kahal is supposed to say it anyway. The kdusha, by the way, the Shulchan Aruch is very clear about that. The kdusha, kdusha that we say, what is the kdusha? You know what's the structure, the classic structure of kdusha? We have an invitation, or an intro. In the Ashkenaz Nusach, we say, Nekadesh et Shimcha ba'olam kishesh mokishim otom ishmei yorom, etc. In the Sephardic Nusach, we say, Nekadishach v'naharitzach. In Musaf, the Sephardim say, it doesn't matter, it's still an intro invitation for Kedusha. Then you have the Pasuk from Isaiah, Kadosh, 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 Holy, Holy, Holy. You have then Pasuk from 
יחזקאל, ברוך כבוד השם ממקומו, blessed is God's glory from its place, and then the third פסוק is, ימלוך השם לעולם אלוהי יחצין לדור ודור הללויה, from תהילים. This is the קדושה. What do we have in between all those, all those verses? It's connectors. So on weekdays, on weekdays we have like little connectors to say, לעומתם ברוך יאמרו, או לעומתם משבחים ואומרים in this hardik נוסח. Right? When it comes to Shabbat, what do we have in Shabbat? We have additions. What are those additions? They're putim. They're extra poems. כבודו מלא עולם משרתיו שואלים זה לזה. That's a poem. ממקומו הוא יפן ברחמים. That's a poem. הוא אלוקינו, הוא אבינו, מלכינו, מושיענו. That's a poem. ממקומך מלכינו תופיע ותמלוך עלינו כמחכים. That's a poem. He said, okay. So that's a little bit different. Big deal. It's a poem. It's not important. And he said, especially the main difference is in the intro. It's an invitation for the, for the, uh, for the Kedusha. It's in the first paragraph, which is Nekadesh et Shimcha Ba'olam. He said, and that's, you're not supposed to say it anyway. It's only the Chazan supposed to say it. The Chazan say, Nekadesh et Shimcha Ba'olam ket 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 Shimcha Ba'olam Ah, now you're going to ask me, so why do we say it? That's based on the Ari. Okay, the Ari, that was the custom of the Ari, and the Aruch HaShulchan, Rav Epstein, actually explained what, what was going on, what's the reason behind it, that we give each other a permission to recite Kedusha. Okay, fine. But comes Feinstein and says, yeah, the, 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 the pshat, the simple way to do that Look at the Shulchan Aruch. You're not supposed to say it. Done. Finished. So what's the difference? So if you're not supposed to say it, this is going to say, Nakdishach, this is going to say, Nekadesh, I'm going to get excited about it? No. So Rav Moshe Feinstein says, he has a totally different approach. Unlike the approaches that we've seen before, Rav Goren says, everybody has to have the same Nusach, and it's going to be Ashkenazi Nusach. Rav Ovad Yosef said, everybody has to have the same Nusach, and it's going to be the Spartic Nusach. Arav Klein says, everybody's going to have the same Nusach, but it really doesn't matter which Nusach. It's going to be by the Chazan, it's going to be majority. Whatever you guys want is fine, because they're all kosher, they're all equal. Kamarav finds it and says, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to have the same Nusach. It's all legitimate. It's all Jewish. It's all kosher. Move on. So uh, he's, not, he's the, not as concerned with the unity of it all. Like the other ones all was as long as you don't correct. have the... Correct, because this, he said that the differences, like, correct, the differences in the Nusraot are not enough to dissolve the unity. Right. That's what he says. It's my new Shia. Yeah. Right. Vadayan baze mishum lotit godedu. It's not lotit godedu. It's not creating groups. It's, it's one community. It's one minion. Velo mishum chashash machloket. אף שוודאי טוב לומר בלשון שהשץ יאמר, ולכן ליקה חילוק, לעניות דעתי בזה. And he said, it's better if everybody kind of follow the חסן, but not the end of the world. That's how Moshe finds it. So he's got like a totally different approach to that question, which brings us to the next תשובה. Next תשובה, is Arab Nahum Rabinovich, one of the giants of our generation, passed away um, about a year ago, maybe even less than a year ago, about a year ago. Um, yeah, in May 2020, wait, May 2020. He was born in 1928 in Montreal, um, was the uh, Rav, the head of the Yeshiva, Yeshiva Tehesder, Birkat Moshe, Ma'ale Adumim. Um, his main work was the Perush on, on the Rambam. Brilliant. I mean, beyond brilliant. Uh, um, and, and one of the most important uh, poskim for the Zioni community 
um, of our generation. Um, he was a rabbi, um, you know, started in Montreal, then he was in Charleston in South Carolina, and then he made uh, he made Aliyah in, in uh, first he was in London, actually. Uh, he was uh, the dean of uh, Jews College, um, where he met actually Rabbi Sachs, and he was actually the rabbi. He was the rabbi of Rabbi Sachs. Um, and um, and uh, in 1983, he made Aliyah, and since then he was uh, he was uh, in Israel. Um, anyway, so Arab Rabinovich has a totally different approach. Narav Rabinovich was asked a similar question, and this is how he answered that. Gam achshav, shezachinu lekibbutz galuyot. In this time, this area that we have married to have in gathering of the exiles. Ve'en lecha kimat makom ba'aretz she'en bo yotzei kihilot shonot. And everywhere in Israel, you have people from different exiles, from different communities. Gam achshav zichron ha'tfila be'veit av ha'osava, this is something that is very emotional. Tefillah is something that is very emotional. Of course, it creates a lot of memories to tradition, etc. And also, it's a major factor, major element in the kavana, in the intent of the tefillah. Okay. On the other, and therefore, by the way, and therefore it means that one should perhaps maintain the nusach of his family, what he's used to, because it's meaningful. Then, here's what he says, third line. Aval meidach, on the other hand, lo pachot chashuv sheivatzer nusach mekomi. It is as important, that is, we're going to have a local nusach. Kmo shaya me'azu mitamid, hakolel et kol b'nei hamakom, something that is that is relevant to all the residents, everybody in the community. And he said, in our life, when people travel between communities so quickly, you're going from your Tel Aviv to Yerushalayim to Ra'anana to Be'er Sheva, in a matter of hours with a car, there's a need for one Nusach for everywhere, the entire Am Israel or even between Israel and America. It's just a plane. Ein litzor davar milemala. He said, we cannot decide. We, the rabbis, cannot come and say, this is the Nusa. Basically, he says, the way Arab Ovadia and Arab Gorin came and said, this is it, and you should follow that, that's wrong. And definitely one should not give up the connection and the sentimentalism to the past. However, there's nothing more frustrating from the situation that you have that brothers are different and they go to different places in that thing that's supposed to unite us, us that there is tefillah. The Jews should be in one heart. And instead of being together, everybody's going to their own shul. This one goes to the Ashkenazi, this one goes to the this one goes to the Yemenite. And therefore he says, The rabbi, that means the rabbi of the community, Okay, it's more about the Israeli community, meaning, right? It's like we're talking about like a rabbi of a city, for example. Like that's the that's the format. It is more that he's talking about, right? Because in Israel, you have a rabbi for each town or each neighborhood or each city depends on the number of residences. Residents. Okay. So the rabbi should make that effort. Nitan laasot. What he suggests is to create a hybrid, a one Nusach. So he also, like Rab Klein and Rab Ovadia and Rab Goren, believes that there should be one Nusach for everybody who's davening together. However, 
it cannot be an existing nusach. It should be built on existing nuschaot, but it's got to be a hybrid. There's got to be a combination of the Sephardic and the Ashkenazi nusach together. כמובן שבסיבור של בני תורה יש לעזור בטענותיהם של גדולה, פוסקים לדחות את הפיוטים מתוך התורה לבוגולה. אוקיי, that's not that important. כך שבמשך הזמן יתגבש נוסח אחיד, and with time there's going to be a unified נוסח, one נוסח, שהרי הילדים והצעירים קולטים את כל הנוסחות ונהנים מכולם, and this way next generation is going to already do that. כך יש שמירה על מורשת אבות שהיא חשובה לכוונת התפילה וגם התחדשות בלימוד הדברים חדשים שאף היא מעוררת הכוונה. This way you kill two bird in one stone. One, you maintain the, the tradition of your עדה, your traditions, but also you have new things. Because the Ashkenazim all of a sudden going to discover some of the Sephardic poems and this is going to be exciting and new. And the, Ashkena- and the Sephardim are going to, dis- to discover some material from the Ashkenazi liturgy that they are not familiar with, and it's going to be exciting as well. But they're still going to have the stuff that they like. Vaikar, the main thing, the main point is that everybody is going to be together with... Um, with friendship and... and, and com- Commodity, etc. Okay. So Arav Rabinovich also believes that there's a need for one Nusach. He doesn't agree with Arav Feinstein on this idea that everybody can do whatever they want. He doesn't agree with Arav Klein saying it really doesn't matter as long as everybody daven together a Nusach, it's fine. He definitely does not agree with Arav Goren that says everybody should adhere to the Ashkenazi Nusach and definitely doesn't agree with Arav Ovadi Yosef that says everybody should go with the Sephardic Nusach. So his approach is to create a hybrid, a Nusach that combines both the Ashkenazi, both the Sephardic, whatever has the elements of both. You take the highlights from both and you create something that is, everybody is going to be happy with, but he still uh, believes that that has to be one Nusach. Uh, Feinstein is unique in this sense. He doesn't see, you know, the problem with that. Which brings us to the last um, opinion, the last tshuva. The last tshuva was written by Rav Eliyahu Bakshi Doron. Rav Eliyahu Bakshi Doron uh, was the chief uh, rabbi of Israel. Unfortunately, he passed away um, this year from COVID, actually. Um, and um, he was born in um, 1941, and he passed, uh, passed away just last ap- April, chief rabbi of Israel in the years 1993 to 2003. Um, he was born in Yerushalayim, and uh, lived all his life in uh, in Israel and um, very interesting very very interesting uh, guy um, he wrote a uh, major work called shoot binyan Av, dealing with halachic uh, questions and um, this is this true vice taken from from his uh, Okay, let's see what he says. Oops, what happened? Sorry about that. Here we go. I'm trying to move the... Ah, here we go. Now I can read. The customs and the traditions that develop with, with regards to tefillah. They paved the correct, the right way for tefillah. Tefillah is avodah shebalev, worship of the heart. And just like 
people have different opinions. Though they have different feelings and different avenues and different ways. And every person has his or her own mechanism that connects them to the tefillah. Amazing. You'll see he's going to develop that. Just like that the beauty of creation is in the variety of colors and shapes, etc. So is the beauty of tefillah in the pluralism, in all all its variety, with all the different shapes and melodies and variations. If everybody dressed the same and ate exactly the same food, we're all going to survive. But it lacks the special, the beauty that that we have in living, in life. The same goes for tefillah in Nusach Achid. Same goes for tefillah. If you're going to have the Nusach, one Nusach for everybody, in one way for everybody, the same melodies and the same style of tefillah and everything, yeah. Are you checking the box? Of tefillah, yes. Are you fulfilling your halakhic obligation? Yes. But it's not going to have the impact, doesn't have the beauty of tefillah, doesn't have the variety. It's not life. It's like, you know, if everybody ate the same thing, they're going to survive? Yes. Are they going to be happy about that? Some yes, some no. Some people like schnitzel, some people don't. <laughs> Whatever that is. Tfilahi ulam makhaita af shawuta bituya ishi veta regga shota pnimiim shetsurot rabotla. Yeah, it's tfilah. Technically, it's tfilah. But you know what it does? It takes away the ability to express yourself, it takes away the ability for personal expression. The inner feeling, the inner feelings that one has, that comes in very forms, in variations, in many colors. Same goes for other customs and traditions. This is incredible sentence. He said, Halakha, there's one language that talks about the principles. Okay? Yes, you have to daven, you have to say Shmonesa, you have to say the Shema. However, the beauty and the splendor is the fact or manifest themselves in the way it being manifested, in the language, in the form, in the style, in the, in the music. That allows the personal expression. One shul in one style for everybody. Yes, you can fulfill your halachic obligation in shul like that. But it does not enable you the way, or doesn't enable you to choose the right way for you, for your expression, for your way to be connected to the tefillah. And here is the most important thing. Achdut, unity, doesn't mean that we need to cancel the individualism. Unity does not mean that we can't have individualism. But rather we need to create a community, 
a whole product, but the whole product has different languages, it has different colors, has different approaches, has different melodies, different traditions, different tastes. And that's what creates the, the product. Same goes for a, a society, a society that does not allow individualism. A society does not allow individualism is a limited society. And this limitation is what creates machloket. It's that this is what creates the separation. That what creates the problem. He has even a different approach than all of them. He says. Hold on. I need to come back here. Um, Rav Bakshi Doron says there's no reason to have the same Nusach. There's no reason even to be together. I don't, you know, he completely disagreed with the previous assumption. He said that the beauty of Tfilah, the beauty of davening together is, exists because everybody is different. Because everybody has their own way of expressing themselves. And unity does not mean that we don't have individual expression. Um, which brings that question of discussion, right? As I started, when it comes to, especially nowadays, everybody has very strong opinions. You should do this, don't do this. You, things are going to be done this way, not this way. Da, 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 everybody's like, and it just like open your mind to this idea of culture of debate or how do we deal with question? One approach, I'm right, you're wrong. And I'm gonna convince you that I'm right and you're wrong. Right, that's Arab Goren. That's Arab Ovadia Yosef. That's it, there's one way, it's the right way. Your way is the wrong way. And I'm going to convince you that you're wrong and I'm right. There's another approach that says, not mine, not yours. Let's go by the majority. Let's, whatever. Let's, let's, let's build something new. There's another approach that says, let's take mine, let's take yours, let's create a hybrid. That's Arab Rabinovich. There's a Rav Feinstein approach that says, we can have different little autonomies. Everybody's gonna do whatever they want. As long as we generally, we're, you know, we're staying in the same, there's no problem with that. And taking it even another step further, is a Rav Bakshi Doron. Rav Bakshi Doron says, we can build something together. There's no problem. There is no problem even with the fact that we do things in a different way. We're here for the same purpose. We're all here. We're all here to for you know something, something that is greater than all of us. And let's just respect each other and let's do it. It doesn't matter. And for me. It's uh, when I looked into that and I kind of like uh, started playing with this, uh, with this material. Um, it's very inspiring. Um, and, you know, these days when, when you look our, at our leadership, whether it's religious leadership, whether it's political leadership, whether it's whatever, um, I wish um, we had a little bit more of of Rav Feinstein, a little bit more of, of, of Rav Rabinovich, a little bit more of Rav Klein, you know, respect the other opinions as well, but 
still let's try to work together. Let's try to find something that works for everybody together rather than, than the approach of I'm right, you're wrong, and I'm gonna show you that um, approach. And um, I hope uh, it will inspire us. And it's hopefully, especially this, 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 when it comes to tefillah, especially, people get so crazy, especially when it comes to customs and tefillah and whatever, and practices and this and that. Come on, people. You know, sometimes we, we forget why we do all that stuff. It's like, you know, what's the kavana behind it? We want to dive in together. We want to do something together as a community. We, it's all for the sake of a mitzvah or whatever. Does it really matter? Does it really matter? Things are being done in a different way. Everybody should be a little bit more flexible. Everybody should be not so crazy about if you know, things are a little bit moving from the, their comfort zone. You know, just, you know, my kids invented that word. It's called chillax. Chill and relax together. Just like, you know, don't be so, you know. And um, so I hope uh, it makes sense. Uh, it's inspired me. So I thank you for um, for the opportunity to delve into those sources and actually um, come up with this, uh, with this uh, shiul. And... Uh, that's it. If there's any questions, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to answer. This, this is not a question. This is not a question.